The latest Starship launch left a bitter taste, not because it failed. Despite not achieving the planned landing, everything went generally well. What's concerning is seeing Starship splash down in daylight once again. The spacecraft was notably scorched, representing one of the program's biggest challenges to date. So much so that Elon Musk acknowledged that Starship's heat shield remains the program's greatest challenge, and they're reconsidering previously dismissed options. We'll also see how they literally shot at Super Heavy to sink it, in unprecedented footage that SpaceX tried to suppress. The launch began with a perfect Super Heavy liftoff, as usual, with all 33 Raptor engines operating at full power. SpaceX provided a slow-motion shot, clearly showing the shockwaves. During the ascent to hot staging, everything went according to plan. Super Heavy shut down 30 engines, maintained the three central ones, Starship separated, and we witnessed a beautiful engine ignition sequence of Super Heavy for its return to the platform. Interestingly, Elon Musk mentioned in Donald Trump's daughter's vlog that the rocket experiences 20 Gs during this maneuver. The boost back burn is doing 20 Gs, so you wouldn't want to be on that. You wouldn't want to do the flip, yeah. <laughs> in fact, Donald Trump and his family witnessed the Starship launch at Starbase, where Elon Musk explained how Starship and Super Heavy work. After Super Heavy began its return sequence, we all expected to hear the flight director confirm catching the rocket in the platform's arms. But this didn't happen. Instead, they announced there would be no super heavy catch. Call out, uh, boost back, or excuse me, booster offshore divert. Unfortunately, that means that we are our no go for the catch. Um, as we said before, both the tower and the vehicle, as well as the operators on console, have been actively evaluating the commit criteria for that return to the launch tower. Um, and unfortunately, we did not have a pass on those commit criteria, so we are no-go for tower catch. Officially, SpaceX reported an issue with the tower. While not officially confirmed, comparing images before and after launch shows, the upper antenna had bent. This antenna serves as a lightning rod and communication system. Although Elon Musk assured on Twitter they could have caught Super Heavy anyway, they chose to be cautious and divert it to the sea an emergency maneuver that hadn't been tested before and was convenient to try at some point. We observed Super Heavy descending to simulate being caught by the platform, but this time over water. You can notice it was descending at high speed, which aligns with Elon Musk's comments about performing a faster and firmer Super Heavy catch. SpaceX cut the transmission just before impact and explosion, but everyday astronauts' cameras captured not only the explosion, but also how a SpaceX boat later approached Super Heavy, which hadn't fully sunk and started shooting it with large caliber projectiles to puncture the tanks and cause it to sink. These images, banned and deleted by SpaceX on X, show Super Heavy sinking in the Gulf of Mexico. While it looks like cardboard, it's simply a fuselage designed as thin as possible, hollow to hold all necessary propellants while maintaining minimal weight. Moving to Starship, it successfully reached semi-orbita again, and SpaceX revealed they carried a banana as payload. Subsequently, the crucial Raptor engine firing in space was performed, demonstrating SpaceX's ability to operate this complex engine in zero-gravity conditions and confirming its readiness for orbital missions. Starship's cruise phase occurred mostly in darkness as the vessel was in Earth's shadow, but as it approached Australia to splash down in the Indian Ocean, Illumination gradually increased until the anticipated atmospheric re-entry began. This re-entry was performed with 2,100 fewer tiles that SpaceX had removed from Starship, considering them unnecessary, and indeed they weren't. Starship survived re-entry. However, a notable wrinkle was observed on the vessel's side, precisely where the heat shield tile should have been. Fortunately, it didn't worsen, and the stainless steel fulfilled its purpose, Remembering this material was specifically chosen for its high temperature resistance. In a stabilized shot, you can see how Starship began its descent toward the splashdown point, where a buoy waited to record the entire process and belly flop maneuver. While these images weren't shown live, SpaceX shared them later.
But wait a minute. Upon close examination of Starship's condition, it's clear it was completely scorched. While it survived re-entry, it's evident this vessel couldn't withstand another launch, which represents a significant problem. Elon Musk confirmed this in a later tweet. The remaining major technological challenge for Starship is developing a fully and immediately reusable heat shield, allowing the vessel to land, refuel, and take off immediately without requiring repairs or extensive inspections. A crucial test Starship hasn't yet passed. This situation suggests that what happened with the sixth flight Starship has likely happened with all previous Starships. It doesn't seem Starship ended up this way solely due to the partial absence of heat shield. Rather, this time it was possible to see the complete vessel in daylight. In fact, this was likely SpaceX's true motive for scheduling Starship's landing during the day, to evaluate the vessel's actual condition after re-entry. This issue concerns SpaceX. Elon Musk mentioned in a tweet that they're reconsidering previously dismissed options due to their complexity, such as cooling Starship's body by circulating cryogenic propellants through the fuselage's most critical areas, a solution requiring significant hardware modifications and increasing complexity, something Elon Musk dislikes. Fortunately, the U.S. Federal Aviation Administration FAA, confirmed in a statement that all Starship flight parameters were satisfactory and remained within the criteria established in the license, so no investigation will be required. However, this doesn't mean there will be a launch before year's end. That's completely ruled out. In fact, there's already a date for Starship's seventh launch, January 11th, according to an official FAA document that has been accessed. It's also been revealed that SpaceX will attempt to catch Starship at the tower during the eighth launch, which is coming soon. The Starship program continues evolving and facing new technical challenges. If you want to stay informed about the latest advances in the space program and to Starship's development, I invite you to follow SpaceX's official updates and specialized space sector media coverage. And above all, subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed this content. The Starship program continues evolving and facing new technical challenges, reminding us that space exploration is a complex but necessary path. While SpaceX perfects its vessel for future interplanetary travels, a fascinating question arises. Where will we head when we're ready? The search for extraterrestrial life and habitable planets might give us the answer. In fact, our location in the Orion arm of the Milky Way puts us in a privileged position for this discovery. If you're intrigued to know why our galactic region is special for life and when we might find evidence of extraterrestrial life, I invite you to watch this detailed analysis by clicking here. You'll discover why scientists are convinced this finding could happen this decade, or at latest in the 2040s.